friends, welcome back to the A Yoga Co. My name is Emily Harding, I'm the founder of the A Yoga Co. You might also know me as Just The A Yoga. And today we are going to be doing a medium length class. It's going to be a nice, slow, juicy flow, which if you're feeling really stagnated right now, lacking inspiration, and it's also, uh, it's there to give you inspiration, hopefully make you feel a little bit more creative, but it's also quite a slow grounding flow in which you're going to be working with humble warrior pose because this flow is all about surrendering to the chaos and the craziness of the world that we're living in right now. So have maybe a cushion close by, a couple of books or blocks if you need them, and let's get going. So I'm going to invite you to bring yourself to lay down onto your mat. If you wanted to put a little yoga music on or anything like that, there's a playlist at the link underneath, you can pop it on. <sighs> Otherwise, practice in silence or whatever your jam is, and just take your feet as wide as your mat, your towel, or if you're just practicing at home on the carpet, all power to you. Just bring your feet a bit wider than the hips. <sighs> all righty, whether you're practicing this in the morning or the evening, and everywhere in between, just place your hands on your belly, close your eyes down. And just start to take a few really nice deep breaths in and out. Feel your shoulders and your head softening into the ground. So like I said, this is a practice about surrendering. And I've personally been kind of trying to fight too hard against the pandemic. If you're watching this way in the future and you're like, the pandemic, that's old news. But if you're in it right now, like I am, you might feel like, Maybe your life isn't yours to control anymore. That's what I've heard from a lot of people. But friends, control is an illusion. So what we're gonna to do today is just really work with that and just practice surrendering. So as you're still laying here, your hands on the belly, just letting yourself be in the present moment by breathing in, hands go up. Breathing out, hands soften down. Just drawing your mind onto something as simple as belly inflating, hands moving, and down again. So just really take your time here. We're just trying to slow the mind down. That is the purpose of our yoga practice, to still the fluctuations of our mind, not to become an Instagram yoga celebrity or do the splits, anything like that. Not just the practice of sweating, there can be sweat, but it's a psychology. So I'm going to invite you to place one of your hands on your heart now. And just check in with how you're feeling today. This is a slow grounding movement practice today. And the yogic concept that we talk about is a parigraha, non-coveting non-attachment. Just taking a few more deep breaths here. Hopefully your whole body is feeling way more relaxed than a couple of minutes ago. And then let's slowly think about setting an intention for our practice. So let's set an eclectic intention today using the words, I intend to invite good health into my life my body and for my loved ones. So just repeat that to yourself a couple of times. Because as we know, our health is our wealth. And too many people will try to spend their health accumulating wealth. And then once they've got wealth, they spend their wealth trying to get their health back. We're gonna know better than that. We're gonna bring awareness in a bit earlier than when it's all gone bit feet on. So let's just slowly take our elbows out to the side, starting to bring that movement in. If you've been itching to get moving already, just know that again, don't be attached to what you normally do. It's good to sometimes have a practice where you don't get what you want. But I suspect, dearest pals, that you'll certainly get what you want. And if not what you want, but what you need in today's practice. So just starting to sweep the legs from side to side on a deep breath in. And out. So remembering you're practicing at home, I can't see you. 
So you've got to really take it easy, listen to your body, not putting it or pushing it to anywhere it doesn't want to go. And let's start to look away from the knees. So gently twisting your head as you slowly go from side to side. Just kind of massaging the sacrum and the hips as you roll over. And then nice and slow, let's come back to the center. Let's hug our knees in. Give yourself a big, big squeeze. It's so nice to give yourself a big hug. And from here, can you nuzzle the nose into the knees? Take a big breath in. And exhale, release. <sighs> bring the head back into the ground. Stretch your arms up into the sky and bring your knees over your hips. So from here, you shouldn't be able to get the hands under the back. The back is pushing into the floor. So see how I tuck the tailbone away from me and the lower back is into the ground. Knees on top of hips as best you can. If it's too much, bring them in a little bit closer. So we're going to start by bringing a little heat into the body. So we lift the shoulder blades up as high as we can. Energy through the toes, energy through the fingertips. Look up towards the sky. It's a kind of bug shape here. Squeezing your belly in and breathing nice and deep. Look up towards the ceiling. Smile. Lift the chest. Hold it here for five. Deep breaths in. Holding here for four. Keep breathing. I know if you're trembling, it's good. Holding here for three. It's okay, trembling means we're building strength, we're doing something we haven't quite been able to do before, for two, and for one, beautiful work. Stretch your arms all the way over the head, hug the knees in towards you, take a nice deep breath in, and then slowly bring the arms up and grab a hold of the back of your thighs. So we've started to wake the body up in the core, let's start to take a couple of rock and rolls up and down the sides of the spine, and then really take it off the railroad off the train tracks by going really to the edges of your back. Nice and slowly, of course, if anything's hurting, if you're wearing one of those sports bras that have the clippy bits of the back, ladies, um, you might feel them digging in a little bit, but that's okay, we're not gonna be on our backs for too long. So just see what works for you. And if you're normally very rigid, just only ever going backwards and forwards, let yourself surrender into it. If you come off the mat, no big deal, come back down. Find what works for you, come off the mat another way. So again, we're letting, thinking about letting go a little bit, getting out of our heads, because you can literally drive yourself mad trying to control everything in your head. So this is also working the core. We're gonna slowly cross our legs over and come up to the top. And this might be where you wanna grab yourself a little pillow, a little cushion, whatever it is. That was really ungraceful how I jumped up there, but it's not about grace, it's fine. Um, and we're gonna sit ourselves up nice and tall. So find a place where you feel comfortable. If the knees are hurting, you don't have to sit the feet all the way into the hips like this. And from here, let's just take a moment to bring the ears up to the shoulders or the shoulders up to the ears. You know what I mean? Ah, and exhale, let them come back down. So we've set our shared intention. Very powerful to be working with a collective intention. And let's bring our hands into the heart center. If it works more for you to go like that, both hands on the heart, that's totally fine as well. So from here, we're going to set our deep, victorious, warming breath. You'll hear me talk about it all the time, Ujjayi breath. So in this breath, we want to be catching the breath in the back of, blah, 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 catching the breath in the back of the throat. So you take a nice deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth, the sound eight J to start. Imagine you're fogging up a mirror that's in front of you. So just keep going like that, getting used to the sound of your own breath. Always take a while setting the breath because it's one of the most important things about the practice. Think breath first, movement second. And on your next breath out, close the lips halfway. So the breath starts to come out through the nose. noticing how nice it is to take this time to sit and breathe and then whenever you're ready we're going to close the lips entirely and start to find that breath dragging through the back of the throat and it's in and out through the nose only beautiful so keep that breath going if at any point you realize you've lost it 
bring your attention back. We're either present or we're lost in thought. There's no in between, so stay present. Using your ujjayi breath, you're gonna take the hands to the knees, inhale, sweep forwards towards the right thigh, come across to the front and exhale, roll it back. So take your time. Inhale, feel the hips moving a little bit maybe. Make sure the knees are okay as you're moving here. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, squeeze it forwards. If you need to move the feet a little bit, you can. Exhale, bring it back. Now close your eyes and just let yourself kind of really find a rhythm that works for you. So you might know if you've come to my classes in real life or my corporate classes, I'm all about a little something called yeah, not meh. I've got my little sign behind me. And that is all about not just letting go of the things that we know we don't like or are bad for us, but it's those kind of insidious gray parts where it's like, mm, meh. And it's so easy to let your life be kind of created up of these meh moments. So whenever you're ready, let's swizzle it around in the other direction. Keep going with the breath, eyes stay closed. So it's, we start on our mats by finding what feels really great for us, the yeah in our practice, and not just the meh or the no. And then slowly it comes off the mat with us so that when we are looking at different situations, we'll be able to remember to ourselves, how is this serving me? Does this make me feel yeah or does this make me feel meh? So try to find one big more circle of yeah as you come round and forwards and then slowly bring it back into the center. Beautiful work. Feeling a little bit warmer now, I hope. Let's bring the right hand down to the side, stretch the left arm up, reach it up and over. And exhale, slowly come back. Nice deep breath in, stretch through the right fingertips. Exhale, slowly over to the other side. Inhale to lift and lengthen. And exhale to come over to the other side. You don't have to get your elbow to the floor. It's, there's no be all and end all in yoga. There's no right or wrong way to make the shapes in your body. As long as you're not hurting yourself, as long as you're not pushing yourself with your ego, everyone's got a totally different body shape. And that's what's amazing about this world. We're all unique. So don't expect your practice to look like mine. I won't expect mine to look like anyone else's. We're all unique in that. So let's take a last one here. And slowly release. Let's just take a little open of the chest. Inhale, deep ujjayi breath in. And exhale, slowly rounding the back, interlacing the fingertips in front of you, round the shoulders, push the palms away, and inhale, slowly sweep your arms up into the sky, squeezing the belly in and up, lengthening the back of the neck. Take a nice deep breath in. And exhale, release. So as you start using your ujjayi breath now, see if you can really regulate it so the inhale is the same as the exhale. Let's slowly roll ourselves forwards onto our hands and knees. Pop your cushion to the side for a moment. And from here, what we're gonna do is just tuck the toes under, hands underneath the shoulders. So this is a practice for everyone. I'll give you different options as we go through for different kind of flavors and experiences. But for here, let's all try and lift the knees and see what I did with my tailbone there. I tucked it under. Rounding the shoulder blades, squeezing the belly in and up. Arms are straight and strong. If you've got hypermobility in the arms, gentle bend in those elbows. Otherwise, lock them out. Squeeze the belly in and up. Hold for three. Are you still breathing? Hold for two. Spread your fingertips wide like stars. And for one, well held, everyone. Lift your hips up and back. We're going to find our first down dog. And to make sure we're in the right place, we're going to shift it forwards into a plank pose. So inhale, slowly ripple forwards. Shoulders over the wrists, pushing the heels back towards the back of the room. Glutes are switched on. You're making this kind of little cobra's hood with the shoulders. And then slowly you lift the hips up and back. Nothing needs to move with the hands and feet. It's just the hips. And then looking back towards your knees or maybe if you've been practicing yoga a little bit longer, your navel. Twist those elbows down towards the ground. Send your shoulder blades down your back and hold it here. You can have a nice bend in the knees as well, especially if you're newer to yoga. You want to think straight spine instead of kind of rounded spine here. And let's hold it here for three. At any point in this practice, you can take a child's pose. Holding here for two. And for one, whenever you're ready, you're going to gently 
Lift the right leg up just the halfway. We're not trying to stretch it all the way up into the sky. And exhale, step that right foot forwards. Look to the front, step the left foot forwards. Bring the toes together, inhale, lift the chest for that back position. You're trying to really draw the shoulders back away from the ears and exhale, fold it forwards. Beautiful work. Roll yourself up into the sky, take your time. And then sweep your arms all the way up. We're gonna move through a couple of sun salutations, Surya Namaskar, look up towards the thumbs. Exhale, slowly hinge the hips, melt forwards. Take your time, let the head be heavy. Inhale, lift the chest, flat back position, shoulders away from the ears, sweep the belly in. Exhale, plant your hands. Now you can use blocks if you need to, and let's think about stepping the right foot back, hold it here. The left foot back, nice and strong. Take a deep ujjayi breath in, and exhale, knees down, chin and chest to the floor, elbows to the ground. Lower your belly, and let's take a low cobra. Lift the hands, push the tops of the feet into the floor, and exhale, hands down. Hips up and back, you tuck your toes under and you start to lift up into your down facing dog. You see I wiggle the feet out to their hip distance apart. Outside edge of the feet parallel to one another and let's squeeze the belly in and up, holding here for three, looking back to the knees or the navel. You don't have to try and push your ears all the way through the chest like this, all the way through the arms, sorry. Holding for two. Holding for one. And whenever you're ready, gently lift the left leg halfway. It doesn't have to be huge. Step your left foot forwards this time, followed by the right. Inhale, flat back position. Lift the chest, shoulders back. Exhale, fold it down. All right, let's bring the hands together. Inhale, sweep it up into the sky. I'm feeling very musical today. I'm not quite sure why. Exhale, hinge to the hips. Take your time folding forwards again. Lovely. So if you can't keep the fingertips in line with the toes, bring your hands to your shins. Both are fantastic. It just depends on the length of your hamstrings. Exhale, folding down to the ground. Step your left leg back this time. Take a little moment. Step your right foot back. And again, nice deep breath here. Look forwards. If chaturanga's in your practice, go for it. Otherwise, come with me. Exhale, knees, chin and chest down to the floor. You're really squeezing the glutes as you lift the hands up, low cobra. And exhale, hands down, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Beautiful work, everyone. Again, look all the way back to the knees or the navel. You're trying to squeeze the belly in and up. And then feel as though you're pulling your mat, your towel, your carpet, whatever it is apart. So pushing your hands forwards, pushing your feet back. All 10 knuckles gripping into the floor. Holding for three. Holding for two. Holding for one. Beautiful, we're gonna to look to the front. If you wanna to hop to the front, hop to the front. Otherwise, we're gonna walk our right foot over to the left and our left foot crosses it. So you're gonna crisscross your way up to the top of the mat. You can be as serious or as sassy as you wanna be with this coming up to the front. It's your practice after all, just stay present. Inhale, lift the chest, flat back position and exhale, melt down. Uttanasana, our deep forward fold. So let's roll ourselves all the way back up into the sky, look towards the thumbs and come to stand. Hands in the heart center, Samastuti here. I'm just gonna tuck my top back in. Okay, and then from here, let's come into Utkatasana, which means chair pose. So we bend the knees, tuck the tailbone, sweep the arms up into the sky, twist the little fingers towards each other and hold it here, lifting up between the fingertips. Squeeze the belly in, lift up through the pelvic floor muscles. Hold it here for three. Now surrender to the shape here. Can you sit back a little bit deeper? Holding for two, should be able to see your toes over the knees. Holding for one, can you sink back that little bit deeper? Hold it here, tuck that tailbone, tuck it baby. Hold for three, hold for two, and one. Well done you, bring your hands into the heart center. Lift your hips, now gentle bend in the right knee if it feels good. Slowly sweep your left leg behind you. We don't wanna see any of this, we're not trying to wang the hips open here. I didn't ever think I'd get an opportunity to use the word wang in my yoga classes. But here we are, push your left heel away from you and you're twisting the left thigh towards the right. Looking forwards, roll those shoulders back from the ears and we're working into the back body, strengthening all over the body. This is kind of like a handstand shape if you were to put the hands out in front of you. Keep looking forwards, are you still breathing? 
and slowly we're gonna make our way to warrior two. Slow transition, bend your right knee, twist your left foot in and see if you can start to step that left foot back. Super slow-mo, heels in line with each other. I have a little line on my mat which can be quite helpful. It might work for you, it might not. And then right knee on top of the right ankle, stretching the fingertips apart, pull the feet away from one another and hold it here. So you're looking over the right hand, try not to surf backwards or forwards. Make sure you can see the inside of your right foot. Hold for three, zip up through the core. Bring a little lightness into the face. Hold for two, yes, and for one. Flip the palms to the side, take a deep breath in, the legs aren't gonna move. Exhale, hinge of the hips. Right fingertips coming down. So we're taking this kind of modified triangle pose here, and instead of just collapsing into the floor, lift your chest a little bit higher, opening up, stretching the fingertips away from each other. Hold it here for three. Look up towards the left hand if you can. And remember, if it doesn't work to go that deep, go way less deep. Hold for two. Good, everybody. And for one. Now you're gonna keep your legs exactly where they were. Take a deep breath in, it's just the torso that's moving. Exhale, all the way up and back, reverse warrior. So if you come all the way back with your warrior, bend into that right knee. It's a side body stretch. We're being mindful here, not dumping the weight into the lower spine. Reaching up, you might bring your left hand behind your back, it's up to you. Slow your breath down, come to the present moment again for three. Reconnect with how it sounds for two. You've got this. And for one, come back to warrior two. Now we're gonna bring our right hand behind our back. Here we go for our humble warrior. Baddha Virabhadrasana. Now I go down, keeping my feet as they were, but some people, if you find it a little bit harder in the hips, you might walk your right foot to the side. You might also and or twist your left foot forwards a little bit more so you can get forwards towards the front and snuggle those shoulders inside of the knees. So take a nice deep breath in, roll the shoulders back, twist to the front and exhale, slowly come down towards the ground. So you're trying to twist the hips to the front, squeeze through that back knee. If it doesn't feel right, twist the foot in or bend the knee slightly and think about gently bringing the head down, down towards the ground, but it doesn't ever need to touch. And once you're here, it can feel like a lot of effort in this pose. This is where we're gonna surrender. So now, we're gonna take five deep breaths and I'm gonna invite you to see how this pose can unfold and develop for you. So you can be close to the floor, you can be way higher. It's all good. No right or wrong way to be experiencing this pose. Soften your face for three. Hold for two. Let the head be heavy. And for one, so this pose reminds us, it invites us to figuratively and symbolically, or do I mean literally? Literally and symbolically, bow down to the might of the universe, understanding that we're never truly in control. So we're gonna twist onto our left ball of our foot, a little tricky transition here. Right knee stays on top of the right ankle and slowly lift yourself up into this lunge. Now you can see my knees come back a bit a little bit, so I'm gonna push it in, pull my hands together and draw the arms back. If this doesn't work for you, hands to the elbows or loosely to the forearms, this totally chill as well. So keep breathing nice and deep here. Opening up through the shoulders, take a nice little open here. Awesome work, and then slowly you're gonna bring your right hand and thread it around behind your back. We're gonna bring our left hand down to the ground, or you might wanna use a trusty block or book. I'll pop it there so you can see how you use it. So you want the hips to be squaring off. We're looking down towards the floor. Maybe you're feeling pretty warm right now. That's good, all good here. And take a couple of really nice deep breaths, just focusing your attention. You might need to walk your right foot out to the side, depending on how your hips feel. Take a nice, another deep breath in. And exhale to twist open to the right hand side. So it's like our easy twist, but keeping the right fingertips towards the left pocket and keeping that right knee on top of the right ankle, twisting those hips to the side. Looking over the right shoulder, hold it here for three. If the legs are trembling, that's okay. We're building strength. It's never I am weak, it's I am building strength. Holding two. And for one, I'm just gonna flip myself around so I can continue to be facing you. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into side plank variation. So bear with me. Right hand to the right hip. You're either gonna go ahead and flip onto the left foot and step your right foot straight on top. Or if you're like, Emily, it's a bit much today. I got you, I hear you. Step the right foot to the side, twist your left foot. So the right foot just comes back a couple of feet. And if you're feeling a little bit more tired today or just wanting to take it slow, 
left knee to the floor, swivel that foot behind you and come into this variation here. So we should all be left shoulder on top of the left wrist, nice and strong. If you've got any wrist problems, come down onto your elbow, absolutely fine. And from here, we're going to reach the right arm up into the sky, look towards the fingertips through any option given, holding here for three. Breathing nice and deep for two. Think about stretching those arms above. And for one, take a deep breath and look up towards the fingertips. Exhale, thread it through, thread it under, hold it here, looking around underneath you. Take a deep breath into the back of the ribs. And exhale, slowly come back up, beautiful. From here, we're gonna think about extending our leg into the sky. So if you're on your knee, squeeze your right leg up. If your right foot was in front of you, you're gonna see if you can lift it up. And if you're in that plank, lift it up. Hold it here for three. Breathe deep, lift the hips, hold it here for two. I know it's strong, hold it here for one. Slowly come into a one-legged plank. So take a little shuffling, find your way there. And if you're on your knee, you're just gonna twist yourself onto the hands and knees to me. So a couple of things we're gonna do. From here, pointing that right leg behind you, take a deep breath in. Exhale, knee to nose, making this cat position if we're on our hands and knees. Same thing in our plank. Inhale, stretching our arms away, but you send it to a down dog. Exhale, shh, see if you can bring the knee towards the nose. Doesn't have to kiss. Inhale, send it forwards. Nice, strong core. Exhale, shh, squeeze it up. And again, inhale, send it forwards. Take your time. Exhale, squeeze it up. One more go. Inhale, slowly. Exhale, squeeze knee to the nose. Don't let the rib cage flare. Hold it here. If you've got your left knee on the floor, come to meet us in three-legged dog. So everyone sweep your right leg up into the sky. And another fun little transition. You're gonna open your right leg to the side as far as you can. And imagine you're painting a beautiful line. Maybe your favorite color is on the end of your toes all the way to the front. Don't worry if you needed to bend the knee at any point there. And we should find ourselves in our little lizard pose here. Waking up the hips, still breathing. So if you notice that the breath is gone, when we're doing these slightly more strengthening asana postures, try to bring it back under your control. I know I'm panting, but I'm chatting the whole way through. So we really don't want our bodies to be coming into this fight or flight, even when the pose is strong, we stay in rest and digest. So we're gonna drop the left knee down to the ground, walk your foot in a little bit closer if it needs to. Inhale, sweep the arms up, tuck the tailbone, switch on the glutes, and exhale, open into the chest. So drawing those elbows back, Holding here, hold here for three. Close your eyes, stay present for two. Maybe give the fingertips a little wiggle. And for one, bring your hands forward. This might be a nice opportunity to get your bricks or your books involved. Again, hands to the bricks. Inhale, slowly sink it forwards. And exhale, tuck your left toes under, send it back. So let's inhale, go forwards. Exhale, coming back. So just moving through these mindful little transitions. And just when we think we know where the flow is going, just when we think we're safe, we're gonna to go to the other side. Life, Mama Earth, throws a curveball at us that we need to suddenly adapt to and refine our balance. And it might be confusing, it might be scary, but together with love and patience, anything is possible. So you're gonna do your last rock back and then start to drag your toes in towards you. So I'm gonna show you this variation first. If you've got anything going on the ankles or the knees, sit down on the floor, I'll show you your variation. And from here, what we're gonna try and do is balance on our left heel that's pushing down in towards our left bum cheek. Lift your right legs, zip the thighs up together, squeeze your pelvic floor muscles, something called your mulavanda, and then see if you can start to float the hands off the floor, finding that sweet spot where you're looking forwards and finding your balance, shoulders back. See what works, see what you can do. Have a play there. If anything's going on in the knees today, you're gonna to come and stand up for me. Extend your right leg forwards. See how high you can bring it up without lifting this hip all the way up. Hold it here. It's a little bit harder in the leg, I'm not gonna to lie to you. And then you might see if you can gently lift up onto the toes for any kind of period of time. Have a little play, see what happens. Strengthening the calf. So you can pause the video. You can have a little bit of a longer go with this if you want to. And then well done everyone, slowly come forwards. Place your hands back onto the floor, move your blocks out of the way if you need to. And then from here, slowly step it back into a plank. 
Take a nice deep breath in and let's move through Chaturanga or knees, chin and chest towards the floor. Up dog or your low cobra, lift the chest. If you're in up dog, knees off the floor. And exhale, send it back, downward facing dog. Whew. Let's take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Flutter out your lips in a horse breath. It's just you at home. I don't care if your housemates can hear you. It sounds silly, but it feels great. Let it all out. And then whenever you're ready, you're either going to hop to the front or crisscross your legs forwards again. Take your time. Whatever works for you. And let's take that whole little flow on the other side, shall we? Inhale, lift the chest, flat back position. Hands to the heart center. Squeeze the belly and shoulders away from the ears. Zip up through your thighs. Start to slowly transfer the weight onto the left leg. Lift your right heel, push it away from you. Don't let the hip open up to the sky. Twist the right thigh towards the left. So the great thing is we get two goes at everything. Holding here for three. Focus your breath. Holding here for two. Pushing back through that heel. Holding here for one. Slowly bending the left knee, opening out to the side. Step your right foot back. See if you can find warrior two, virabhadrasana two. So heels in line with one another. Stretching the fingertips forwards. Pushing down through that right foot. Tucking tailbone, holding here. Breathe for three. Ah, the sun's coming out behind me. Lovely. If you can't see the sunshine, be the sunshine. Let it come into your house in one way or another for two. And for one. All right, loves. Flip your palms to the side. Keep the legs still, opening the hips. Deep breath in. Exhale, hinge the hips for your modified triangle. So if you do ever injure your hamstring or anything like that in a groin, this is a great variation on triangle instead of the straight legs. We still get this great open through the side of the hips and the torso. A little gentle open through the legs. It's not as intense. Try to stretch the arms up into the sky. Remember, it doesn't have to be touching the floor. And then slowly, keep the legs as they are. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, brings the hands down. Coming through reverse warrior. Maybe snuggling your right hand to the pocket or keeping it down onto your leg. Just make sure that this back knee is nice and strong. Looking up towards the left fingertips. And again, don't be attached to the posture that you have on the other side. It very well might feel or look different on this side. So no judgment from side to side. And for one, slow down. Bring your left hand behind your back. Interlace the fingertips in the way you would normally do so. So a little bit of yoga for the brain. And we prepare for humble warrior again. So if you needed to wiggle your feet, wiggle your feet. Find what works for you. Hips to the front. Try to keep a little balance from side to side. But it doesn't have to be symmetrical. And we exhale to fold forwards. Coming through our humble warrior. And again, once you're there, we're going to spend a nice long five breaths here, letting yourself sink and surrender. So trying to wiggle the shoulders inside of the knee. And you're bowing down to that understanding that although we can influence the world for better and for worse, that doesn't mean we shouldn't stop being good and doing good. We're never in complete control of it. And to try to be is just going to drive us crazy. Because no matter our best laid plans, there always might be something, as this pandemic has shown us, that will throw a spanner in the works. And if we get really attached to places or things or habits or routines, then you're setting yourself up for a fall when things inevitably change. Take a last deep breath here and twist onto the ball of your right foot. I know it's quite strong. I know that left thigh is shaking. Minus two. Inhale, bring yourself up. Open up into your high lunge. Awesome work. Embrace the wobbles. Beautiful work. And then from here, we're going to think about releasing that left arm around behind us and taking your right hand down. I nearly forgot my sequence. Almost. Didn't have to pause it. Right hand comes down to the ground. Walk that left foot out to the side if you need to. And if you had a block on the other side, bring it in. So from here, we're in our lunge. Take a nice deep breath and lengthen your torso. Oh, and there's the sun. Exhale, twisting over to the left hand side. Left knee on top of the left ankle. As always, if you need to drop a knee to the floor here, you absolutely can. And we're holding here for three. Find your stillness for two. All that's moving is the breath. If all jari breath is gone, just bring back a loving breath. And for one, I'm going to twist myself around again so you can still see me on the other side. 
Let's take it to side plank. Okay, so you're either bringing the, well, we're all bringing the left hand to the left hip. You're either stepping it back, left foot on top of right foot, lifting hips. Again, left foot can come in front, or as before, right foot down. So I'll come with those of you who've got the leg on the floor. Reach that left arm up into the sky, lift those hips. So we're not sinking into this posture. We're energetic, squeezing the core. You're not trying to squeeze it and diminish it. You're just sending energy up the spine. Hold for three. Those of you with the knees off the floor, you're doing so well. Stay strong. Hold for two. And for one, we're all going to exhale, thread our left arm underneath the right. Look underneath you. Look towards those left fingertips. Deep breath in. And slowly release. Come back up. Beautiful. And then again, from here, we're lifting that left leg if we're on the floor. If you've got that right foot on the floor, let's go. Let's lift that left leg. I'm right there with you. Hold for three. Squeeze the glutes. Hold for two. You've got it. Holding for one, slowly come into your plank, extending that left leg behind you or dropping the right knee to the floor. So again, take a nice deep breath in, slow your nervous system down and exhale, match the movements of the breath, Shoo, bringing it in, taking your time, exhale moving nice and slowly here from your high plank to your downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale. Let's take a last one here, real strong here. Exhale, squeeze it in. Let's all meet in three-legged dogs. So if your knee's on the floor, squeeze it up for me. Let's inhale, stretch that left leg up into the sky, Nick cage, Nick cage ribbing together. Uh, I feel this on a Tuesday. It's a very Tuesday thing to do. Twist and bring your left leg all the way forwards, nice and slowly. Shoop all the way to the top, and then you find your little lizard pose again. Knee can come to the floor, opening the hips, finding your yeah in this posture, <laughs> finding what feels good for you. And then slowly, let's think about dropping our right knee to the ground. And again, if you wanted to use your blocks, you can. You can take them in front of you. You don't have to use the blocks. It can feel really nice. Inhaling to come forwards. Exhaling to tuck the toes under, come back. So you might even walk those blocks further down with you. Inhale nice and slowly. Exhale, coming down. Inhale, moving carefully. Exhale, coming back. Inhale, stay one more time. And exhale. Coming to the back. Now, if you were standing up, stand up again. If you weren't standing up, walk your fingertips slowly towards the back of the mat, the back of the room. And if we're just suddenly using all of our momentum to try and whip this leg up, that's not going to do us any good. You want to find that sweet spot. Squeeze your glutes, squeeze your pelvic floor muscles. It's something called mulabandha, stops the energy flowing down the leg, so it stops down the flow of energy. Lift your left leg, find it sticking to your right leg first, <clears throat> and then see if you can find that balance point, strengthening up the toes. If you're looking at me and I'm wobbling, you're going to wobble too. Look at something that isn't moving. Find your balance. And just trust yourself. If it doesn't work first time, so what? There's no medals. There's no gold star. There's no detention. I can't hold it as well on that side, it seems. And then whenever you're ready, slowly think about bringing yourself back down. Take your time. And place the left on the floor. Let's roll ourselves forward. And this time, we're just going to go ahead and bring ourselves into a child's pose. Flip your palms up to the sky, drop the head onto the floor, shake the hips from side to side, take a nice deep breath in, and exhale, let it all go. <sighs> Whatever it is you're working with today, let it out. So control is an illusion. What are you controlling or trying to control in your life right now? How can you be a little softer? Surrendering into it a little bit more. We're going to slowly bring ourselves up into a tabletop position. Last little bit now, my friends. Sweep your right arm up into the sky. Keep the hips level. And exhale. Thread the right arm underneath the left. And you're trying here to push the right arm as far away from you as you can. So that then when you relax into it, it gently pulls itself back and the skin stretches a little bit more. Take your left hand. Interlace the fingertips together and use your left hand 
which is going to be longer than your right here, to gently lengthen that right arm a little bit further till you feel that nice stretch through the right side of the body. Keep the knees pressing in the same way into the floor. Take three deep breaths here, inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Last deep breath here, inhale. And exhale. Slowly start to bring your left hand back down and start to extend your left foot. I'm just wiggle over a little bit to the side so you can see a bit better. Left foot out to the side. So from here, slowly come up onto your hands. Now what, what might happen is you send that left leg a bit further away from you. Keep the left toes pointing to the front and the foot in line with your knee. So it's not going all the way forward, not all the way back. That Goldilocks point in the center. And from here, you might come onto the elbows or stay on your hands, and you can just let that foot wiggle off to the side and just open up into the hips here a little bit. So try to keep the sole of your foot totally on the floor. If it's coming off at all, it means you've maybe wiggled the foot out too far, the ego is pushing you instead of that inner teacher that's within each of us. Opening up into the hips here. Still using Ujjayi breath. And slowly place the hands onto the mat and sweep your left leg back. And let's take it to the other side, shall we? So I'm going to twist myself around again. And let's go left side. Inhale, sweep the left arm up into the sky. Keep the hips level. Exhale, thread it under. Push it away from you as much as you can. Right hand onto the left hand. Interlacing fingertips, pulling that left arm away from you. Using the breath. Can you feel your head sinking and softening that a little bit more? Take a last little deep breath here and then release your right hand. Take your time. Oh, don't come all the way up. Stretch your right leg out to the side. That's 100% what I was asking you to do. I just brought myself up. Reach your right leg out to the side and now lift the hands up. And now maybe take a little bit of a wiggle back. So you don't have to come onto the elbows. Remember, it's not a competition. The elbows are there if you want to explore them, but ask yourself, why am I doing this? You don't just want to copy other people. And I know that a lot of people have injured themselves through copying yoga or, um, well, it's often just gymnastics masquerading as yoga on social media. So be mindful of what you watch and consume. Ask questions about it. And then slowly let's release. Hands come down. Sweep that right leg behind you and bring yourself onto the floor. Twist your legs to the side and bring yourself down to the ground. Now you might want to grab your pillow again. Oh, that was a horrible sound. And sit up onto the pillow if you've got tighter hips and you find it Hard to lean forward if you're all the way here. So lifting the hips a bit can feel nice. If you've got tender hamstrings, very tight or previous injuries, go ahead and put your rolled up pillow underneath your legs instead. And instead of this idea of trying to control our destiny and reach forwards, we're gonna surrender, you guessed it. We're gonna surrender into this nice, soft, long hold here. And if it's too much for the neck, you can just place the head on the arms or the hands. And just really soften your breathing more. Letting your head get deeper and deeper. Letting your spine find a little bit more length and stretch. Take a last few deep, nourishing breaths here. Slowly lift up and roll yourself backwards. Take your time. Bring yourself down into the ground. And you're going to gently cross your right ankle onto your left thigh and hook up hold of the back of your left thigh. Maybe snuggling onto the back of the left shin. If this is too much, you can just sit with the legs on the floor instead if that feels better for you. And take three deep breaths here, really practicing that release for three. 
Can you relax yourself 10% more? Make sure there's no pain in the knees at all. So you might be hanging and pulling and full one. Just relaxing and then gently releasing to the other side. Left foot onto the right side. Deep breath in. Exhale, hugging it in towards you, making sure there's no pain in the knees. No pain, no gain, but no pain in yoga in general. Cultivating that deep, deep loving breath because the breath is the one thing we cannot live without. Yet do we give it anywhere as much attention as the foods we eat, the things we drink, the things we do? Maybe we will if we knew it was looking for us. And release. Let's finish how we started. If you want to pause the video and do any kind of inversion practice, you're super, super welcome to. Just please be really safe, really careful. Otherwise, my friends, let's just take a little twist of the knees once again, just twice on each side. And then let's come into our closing at Shavasana. Shavasana is the most important pose in yoga. Please never skip it. I know it can be tempting to, it might feel like there's not much going on, but this is where the most is going on. So take a deep, deep breath in. And exhale, let it go. Resting yourself into the ground. If you'd like to leave you with this thought, happiness is not getting everything you want or controlling the things around you. Happiness is the freedom that comes when you stop constantly craving for more and then you can embrace change without fear. So maybe you're ready just to wiggle your fingers wiggle your toes, gently roll yourself back up to a comfortable seat, bring your hands either back onto the heart or into a prayer and let's bow our heads down, thanking ourselves, our bodies and each other connected all around the world in our mission to feel good and be good, sharing joy not judgment. <laughs> so the light in you Honours the divine love in each and every one of you. Peace, love, so much health, and so much yeah to you all. Thank you. You made it! Thank you so much for taking this time to practice with me today. I'm so grateful you're here. If you could do me a huge favour if you haven't already, give this video a little like so you know how to come back to it later 
And if you could follow, is it follow? It's subscribe. I don't know, I'm not very good at social media. Subscribe. Um, that would be amazing. I'd love to be able to share more videos with you. And perhaps you'd like to be the hero in someone else's day and send them this video. If you've got up from your Shavasana feeling incredible, why not send them this video um, and let them know you're thinking of them and see if they want to join in as well. It's win, win, win. Um, you get to be an awesome friend. They get to feel awesome. And I get to have more people joining us here and spreading this message to more and more people. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us here. You can follow me, Yaya Yoga, on Instagram or us, the Yaya Yoga Co. I'll have more of my teachers and friends coming in the future. And yeah, let me know what you thought of the video. What should I film for your next? Stay safe, look after your loved ones, and remember your health is your wealth. Bye.